Coming up on Fulton Today, Fulton officials prepare for the runoff election next month. We'll tell you what you need to know, especially if you did not vote in the May election. And we'll show you what happened when Fulton residents became firefighters for the day. Fulton Today starts right now. Welcome to Fulton Today, everybody. I'm Shania Chavis Rucker. Fulton voters will return to the polls next month for the runoff election, but Fulton election officials want to make sure that voters get important information that they need to know before that July 26th day. FGTV's Priscilla Ortega has our story. Like in the primary election, residents will be allowed to vote early in this runoff. But first, election officials want to make sure residents know what's on the ballot before they cast their vote. Thank you for calling Fulton County Voter Registration. How may I help you? With the May primary election in the rear view, Fulton officials are now focused on the July runoff. And with the July 26th date, right in the middle of summer vacation break, they want to make sure that residents consider the option of an absentee ballot. A voter can get that, an absentee ballot, by mail at home, so they can vote at home and then return it to us by election day. The deadline to apply for an absentee ballot by mail is July 22nd. Fulton reports a light turnout for the May 24th election and anticipates an even lighter turnout in July. Even so, there will be an early voting period for residents to cast their ballots. We are going to have three early voting sites open the first two weeks of early voting. And then the final week, we will have five sites open. And in terms of what is on the ballot, because candidates in the following county races did not get 50% plus one of the votes, the top two vote getters in those races will appear again on the ballot. The ballot will have Democratic and nonpartisan races. Republicans, however, can vote in this election if they choose to vote in nonpartisan runoff. They can only vote in nonpartisan runoff races. Now you can find a sample ballot either on the Fulton County website or the Secretary of State's website. And if Fulton County residents have any questions, they can call the Fulton County Registration and Elections Office. Reporting from downtown Atlanta, I'm Priscilla Ortega for FGTV. All right, thank you very much, Priscilla. Meanwhile, Marta is looking to get smarter in the high tech department. General Manager and CEO Keith Parker presented to Fulton County Commissioners the system's 2017 operating budget. He also gave details about MARTA's future plans. They include technological upgrades such as a breeze card app that allows you to bypass the vending machines, Wi-Fi service and equipping buses with transponders that could eventually give buses traffic signal priority. And of course, you can't talk about MARTA without talking safety. Our goal is to make MARTA the dumbest place in which to commit a crime in this entire region because we want people to know that there's police officers who are out there watching, there's security cameras everywhere, and there's going to be a very vigilant effort to hold folks accountable who do misbehave on the system. Another security measure mentioned was the use of body cameras for MARTA police officers. Now, Fulton, DeKalb, and Atlanta residents all fund MARTA through a sales tax. Team, thanks again. Meanwhile, commissioners also approved the project like list for possible road upgrades road. if the T splot is approved. The list is for unincorporated Fulton's use of their portion of the Transportation Special Local Option Sales Tax Funds. Now, the plans include roundabouts at various intersections and sidewalk improvements. This project list comes after various community meetings where residents gave their feedback. We had six meetings with the entire South Fulton. We went in different uh, areas to discuss with College Park, with East Point, with Cherokee Hills, with Hayville, and so on. At the end of the day, after those six meetings, we received comments, and then we agreed that after those six meetings, each jurisdiction will go just to discuss their own projects. So that's what we did. Residents will get a chance to vote on the sales tax on November 8th. Property owners will soon learn the value of their investments and the taxes they'll have to pay. That's because tax assessments are now in the mail. 
David Fitzgibbons is the county's chief appraiser. Sir, welcome to Fulton today. Thank you. It's a pleasure to be here. All right, so first things first, David, let's explain to everybody about the process of how their property is assessed. Generally speaking, we use a, what is referred to as a mass appraisal process, which really is just more of a mass production type of appraisal. It's just as accurate as a fee appraisal in most cases, except we have to consider also the uniformity of our evaluations uh, as opposed to just a single family appraiser. It's usually done by a process we call modeling, uh, which means that we take all of the market data, not just a few sales or a few comparables, and we use all of that market data and a process called regression analysis to build basic models that are based on the type of property, the location of the property, <clears throat> the quality of construction and materials and depreciation, and then we test that with statistical analysis and uh, for uniformity and accuracy. And how often are properties reassessed? The uh, Georgia law says that we will appraise all property as of January 1st of each year. However, we do not visit each property every year, nor do we change the values every year. We look at a statistical analysis to see if generally our properties are in a uh, correct range of values that comply with the law and the Department of Revenue's rules, regulations, and guidelines. And then we address those areas that seem to be falling uh, further out. And explain to everyone what they can do if they feel that their assessment is too high. There is an appeals process. It's actually a three-step appeals process. The first appeal must be to the Board of Assessors, and it must be filed with us on or before the deadline that will be printed on the notice that we will mail to everyone. Uh, it's a 45-day period from the date of the notice. Uh, we would strongly recommend that they file online. They can go to FultonAssessor.org. Uh, they can click on the Appeals uh, tab, and it will take you to an online appeals process, which is uh, quick and easy, and it also gives the added benefit of making available the online mediation process where a owner or appellate may provide us with information, statements, pictures, or statements that will help uh, us determine if their opinion of value uh, might be more accurate than ours. And of course, everyone's interested in homestead exemption. Talk to us about it. Anyone that owns and occupies their residential property on January 1st as its primary place of residence, and primary place is important, can qualify for a homestead exemption. Any uh, advanced exemption, like for elderly or veterans or disabled, must be filed in our office because there is confidential information that we must obtain from the owner. You can file any time during the year. However, if the original application, again, must be filed on or before April 1st to be able to get that homestead exemption for the current year. And David, your final thoughts on the process? Final thoughts are that, that we have made some tremendous improvements in Fulton County Assessor's Office over the past few years. We've tried to make it much more customer friendly. We've tried to make it more user friendly with our website, being able to file appeals, homesteads, and other documents online. Uh, we would encourage everyone to uh, give us a call or a visit if there are any questions or problems. And please contact me personally if you do contact our office and you do not get a quick and uh, satisfactory response. Fulton's Chief Appraiser, David Fitzgibbons, always good to see you, sir. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you for having me. It's been a pleasure. Now, if you have questions about your assessment, please visit the assessor's website or call their office at 404-612-6440. Students in Fulton's Citizens University get an up-close look at just what it's like to be a first responder. Fire Chief Larry Few gave the students an overview of his department and then it was all hands-on. Students got a lesson on the technical skills of firefighters complete with a demo of the gear the first responders wear in all situations. I just wanted them to know uh, some of the great equipment and people that we have here delivering the service um, and just have them come in to see uh, just the, the fire station and all of the technology that we have at hand when we deliver the service to them. And just let them know that uh, the fire department is ready and able to deliver that service with impact and efficiency. The information that you get from this course is invaluable. What I have learned over the last eight weeks is just incredible to me to be in the ins and outs of um, emergency 911 and just, it, it has just been so impressive all the way around. I 
just things that I never even considered or thought about and all the people behind all the things that we take for granted every day. So I would say if you get the chance, take the course. Students learned that Fulton County Fire Department covers over 106 square miles in unincorporated South Fulton and it's supported by 10 fire stations and almost 150 fire personnel. And still to come, men rise and shine early to get in their annual walk. We'll take you there in our district by district coverage next. A birthday celebration honors some of our seasoned residents and men of a certain age take on an annual stroll. Here's this week's District by District coverage. In District 4, the men of the Darnell Senior Multipurpose Facility rise and shine early to walk in observance of Men's Health Week. The one mile sunrise walk gave the seniors an opportunity to support each other in their quest to remain fit and healthy. Kind of take my time because, uh, hey, a couple of months I'll be 80 years old, so you know how that is. And some of these young cats around here, they be trying to break records. I'm not in it. According to the Center for Disease Control and Prevention, there are simple things that one can do to improve one's health, like eating more vegetables, digesting less salt, and walking just 30 minutes a day. Doctors say men are typically worse than women in taking care of their health or going to the doctor. Walks like this and Men's Health Week are designed to encourage men to do both. For information about the county's health program specifically for men, call 404-612-1211. In District 5, seniors from the Bowden Multipurpose Facility put on a special celebration in honor of June birthdays. Members of the facility sang the traditional birthday song to their peers who were reveling in their special day. Some were in their 60s, others celebrated being in their 70s and 80s. I come to enjoy people, to, to meet people, you know, because like sometime when um, as the year go by, things that you used to do young, some people feel like you can't do it anymore because of your age, but no, you have a lot of life in you. It's just very important to have the birthday celebrations at Bowden. I think celebrating our members, celebrating each year on earth is very important. And we want each person to feel special. We appreciate them and we want to make sure they understand that we're, they're appreciated. The seniors say they don't take any of their years for granted, which is why they host their birthday celebrations every month for the Bowden members. And in District 6, seniors at the Palmetto Neighborhood Senior Center got to travel back in time to experience an event they missed out on in high school. This is our annual senior prom. We've been doing this for 18 years. Um, I have been privileged to do it for the last 17 years. This is for all of the seniors that never had a high school prom. So we make sure that once a year they get to go to their own high school prom. We want to thank the uh, manager of the Palmetto Senior Center and all of the participants for what they do not only in carrying out these kinds of activities, but what they do every day, not only for seniors and their families, but for the entire community. From the dancing to the food, it truly was a magical evening. They even crowned a king and a queen who will be called upon to represent the center at upcoming events. And when we come back, healthy alternatives for those living in food deserts. Stay with us. The extremely popular Fulton Fresh Farmers Market is open for the season. Now, the Cooperative Extension Program provides produce for residents who don't have access to healthy foods. FGTV's Lynn Vaughn has the story. People who don't have easy access to healthy foods are again getting free produce delivered to their communities thanks to Fulton County. We actually promote healthy eating in everything that we do. 
We are letting people sample some of the recipes that we will have um, at uh, the locations during the summertime. The Fulton Fresh Mobile Farmers Market will set up at 14 locations this summer. The kickoff celebration took place at the Berean Seventh Day Adventist Church with Fulton leaders in attendance. So making sure that we focus in and, and get people educated on what's good to put in your body and what's bad to put in your body and how you treat yourself is very important to uh, Fulton County. This extremely popular program provides Fulton residents who live in what are called food deserts with a free bag of vegetables after a training workshop on how to prepare the food properly. It's very nice, it's very nice. It's the first time I'm coming here and I'm being very, very impression, impression of this. It's a good program, very good. I mean, they're doing it for us. This is season number six for the program. Two mobile units are used to deliver the fresh produce to areas where mainstream grocery stores are scarce. County leaders say the program is important because when healthy foods aren't easily accessible, that leaves residents at risk for obesity, diabetes, and other chronic diseases. Reporting for FGTV, I'm Lynn Vaughn. Thank you very much, Lynn. Meanwhile, the county's health team is preparing for National HIV Testing Day by encouraging everyone to know their status. National HIV Testing Week starts June 21st. The goal is to get people talking about getting tested for HIV and getting those who test positive into treatment immediately. HIV treatment is an important step in lowering the risk of transmitting the virus and living a longer, healthier life. So it's so important that if you're sexually involved, if you have more than one partner, um, if you're dating, uh, even if you're married, that if you have not been tested in the last six months, that you get to know your status, get tested. The Health Services Department will have a number of HIV testing events throughout the county, including at the West End Mall. According to the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, overall, Americans have a 1 in 99 chance of being diagnosed with HIV at some point in their life. But people living in the South are at a greater risk than those who live in other parts of the country. So now to get more information on getting a free HIV test, just call 404-613-1421. Recent flooding in our region and other natural disasters has created an urgent need for blood donations. Fulton employees helped the Red Cross with that need during a blood drive set up inside the government center atrium. The county holds regular blood drives in multiple government buildings throughout the year. At this drive, 60 pints were collected. Now, according to the Red Cross, all eligible donors are encouraged to give blood, but some types are in very high demand. O negative is very important because anybody can receive O negative, but in order for an O negative donor to receive blood, they have to have O negative. That's the only one that they can receive. The process only takes about 15 minutes. All healthy donors are allowed to give blood about every eight weeks. I feel very fortunate that I am able to give blood and then plus I have been getting all these emails said that they need my blood today and they want it today so I made a point to stop today to give blood. The next blood drive at the Government Center is scheduled for September 1st but if you want to help save a life by giving blood now you can go to redcrossblood.org. And still to come on Fulton today on your mark get set read. Details about a program to keep children educated and entertained this summer. Well, it's your last chance to see some of Georgia's most talented artist works on display. The Georgia Artist Exhibit at the Abernethy Arts Center features a number of unique pieces. Participants competed to have their work displayed during the event and were awarded prizes. Now, different styles of work like paintings and pottery from artists ranging from amateur to professional is now on display. It's an educational experience in itself to see how people experiment and do a painting or a sculpture or collage or whatever they want to, you know, want to exhibit. This is the last week the work will be on display at the Abernathy Art Center, which is located in Sandy Springs. To get more information, just contact the center, 404-613-6172. Yeah. 
And finally, as you know, school's out for the summer, so that means the popular summer reading program is in session. Activities for our older children. Several library branches kicked off their summer reading program with special events. Ronald McDonald himself even made a special appearance at the Central Library. The theme for this year is On Your Mark, Get Set, Read. And that's important to remember now that kids won't be in class for the next couple of months. So we know that now that most children are out of school for the summer, and we also know that children get summer brain, meaning that they lose their skills for learning. So it's important to keep children engaged, and the summer reading program is one way we do that here at Atlanta Fulton Public Library System. There are events for kids of all ages this summer, even young ones who are just starting to learn to read. You can get more information by going to AFPLS.org. It is a great, great program. Now, before we go, we'd like to remind you that we'd like to connect with you online. Check us out anytime on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and watch us on our YouTube channel. Well, that does it for this edition of Fulton Today. I'm Shania Chavis Rucker. Thank you so much for watching. Join us each week for news around and about Fulton County.